Hello, my friends. Welcome. Welcome back. And yes, it's one of our favorite segments of the show, The Older Man Random Reviews. The Older Man Random Reviews. The Older Bob Light from an older man. Yes, an older man. Yes, let's do this. So I cut the intro a little shorter. Hope you guys like it better. Yeah, most of you liked it. 95% of you liked it. So I'm going to stick with the jingle. So listen, random reviews. It's a collection of video clips that you guys send me to get an opinion from an older man. So without wasting any more time, let's get into the first video because we got quite a few to cover today. So this one I saw earlier today really, really triggered me. We're going to watch it first. I'm going to give you a few comments on it and then we'll see what some of the people said. Let's do it. It has been a while indeed. I feel like we should address um, what's happened in the months since we've seen you, since some of our viewers may not know what has happened. So uh, I guess I'll recap. I'll do the honors. <laughs> Help yourself. Okay. <laughs> um, in October, you were on a Zoom call with your colleagues from the New Yorker magazine. Everyone took a break for several minutes, during which time you were caught masturbating on camera. Uh, you were subsequently fired from that job after 27 years of working there. And you, since then, have been on leave from CNN. Do I have all that right? Um, you got it all right. Sad to say. Okay. Hello, Allison. It's been a while. It has been a while. So, why, why was that necessary? Give me any reason at all where CNN, because this is CNN, would want to actually humiliate a man for something he did in the past. Did anyone even remember this? Did anyone even know that this man was involved in some act? The particular career killing act we're about to describe isn't something that just anyone would do. But the idea, especially acute in 2020, that you can have an absolutely great career and have that career almost immediately and entirely derailed by a single really stupid act is really chilling. Consider the case of Jeffrey Tubin, a deeply respected writer and television commentator who until yesterday served regularly as the on-air chief justice correspondent for CNN. What really uh, amazes me is the John Thunes, the Susan Collins who say, the president has learned his lesson. Yeah. <laughs> no, he has not. Elite, imagine this, a top tier Zoom call. People on the call, some of the biggest writers from the most respected magazine in the country. Uh, Tubin is on a call with colleagues from The New Yorker, uh, along with not only folks from The New Yorker, from uh, New York City's premier public radio station, uh, WNYC, all told about 20 people are on the Zoom call. There's some breakout rooms. Speaking of breaking out, according to press reports, at some point, Tubin engages in an intimate act of self-gratification, seemingly unaware that a Zoom camera is on. For his part, Tubin calls the incident an embarrassing and stupid mistake. New Yorker has suspended the longtime writer. Tubin himself asked to be taken off the air at CNN while he deals with a, quote, personal issue. All say, what happens to Tubin now? His best selling book about the O.J. Simpson trial, the run of his life, was the basis. He didn't rape anyone. It wasn't a crime. He was just caught with his pants down. That's it. Simple. But to humiliate the man, just blatantly bring back a personal thing that cost him his job, right? Man just want to rub one out at home. He didn't know that the bloody zoom camera was still on. So you actually had to bring up this humiliating event. Sometimes I, I'm listening to this and I'm just thinking, is this an April Fool's joke that I was sent or what? I, I don't know. I know this guy. I like how he delivers the news. But man, to humiliate the man like this. And when I tell you, it is almost natural, comical, acceptable for a man to be humiliated publicly. You imagine if a, somebody did this to a woman. Oh, Jessica. Yeah. So welcome back on air. I know. Uh, listen, should we tell our viewers what happened back in October when you were fired from uh, ABC company? Yeah, you were caught masturbating because you didn't know that the camera was on. We would be ripped a new a-hole as men. But no, it's okay. 
it's okay to just discredit a man like this. I'm going to read a few comments just so that you know it's just not my opinion. Uncle Glenny said, you really didn't have to recap. Nobody would have remembered. Exactly. I vaguely remember this incident happening. At that time, I thought it was an actual prank or a joke. I didn't even know it was real. 2636 says, she's really enjoying herself laughing. Yeah, she enjoying herself humiliating a man. Don Lovering said, coming on air with this was a stroke of genius, but I'm sure it was hard. Unfortunately for him, they made him out to look like a whack job. Wow. This lady, Anna said, this exchange made her look worse than him. Yeah, it did. James Marr said, this guy has lost all his self-respect and dignity. And the young lady was classless enough to remind him. Wow. Easy, easy to discredit a man. Burroughs Brownie said, this is a woman. Why do we need to know why do you have to bring that up again? He was fired and on leave of absence. So he got his punishment. So bringing it up again, smashing it in his face. I'm more angry for what she's done than for what he did to himself. Exactly. William F. Gavin said, and that folks is CNN news. No wonder why their ratings are in the toilet. This is the news that they feel people should know in order to get their ratings up. Wow. I would, I would hate to be that man in that situation. It almost seems like it's natural to do it, to humiliate men these days. If you guys watched my video last week where I was talking about the ladies on The View who were basically putting on men because they don't have any use for them, then you will understand why I get triggered with this sort of train of thought when it comes to mainstream TV. But anyway, let's move on. Let's move to the next video. I am a huge believer that if a guy is is pursuing you, he's not where he wants to be there yet, especially if he's in his 20s. Like, let's mm -hmm. stop putting all these high expectations yeah. on guys that they have to be millionaires at 20 years old. Like, come Statistically, on. Statistically, men are in their primes in their 30s. In the 20s, usually for a guy, is when they're hustling, that's when they're working, that's when they're graduating from school. They're getting to know themselves. That's where, they, that's where they're getting to know themselves. Like, you have to understand that you cannot put so much pressure on a guy. So yeah. like if you see potential and not only that, he proves to you that he can be do special things with other money. Mm -hmm. Let's go on a picnic. Like buy you one rose, bro. Like he's always thinking about you. He's yeah. always writing you letters. He's being intentional. He's driving you around and telling you, hey, this is where I want to take you in the future. This is what I'm working towards. Mm -hmm. He's painting the future for you so you can see the future. That is what matters the most. So don't be afraid about the broke guys. Give grace to the broke guys. I think that the broke guys with a mission and a vision it's important. Mm, that was tough. That was tough. That you know was what I'm tough. saying? So let's They may be have, broke in the physical, but they rich in the spiritual. In the spiritual, and yep. the Lord's going to provide. So yep, yep, definitely yep. be okay to, to yep. hold them back Trust up a process, little. Bro. Trust the process. Trust the process. But if there's red flags on a broke guy, oh, yeah, yeah. leave him. You know, I did this video yesterday on what is the definition of a broke guy. So someone sent me this video today. And there lies the problem. How the hell you can call... A 20 year old broke any man who's in his 20s who hasn't hit it big on crypto who isn't out on the street selling drugs who isn't doing some shady things so he's either got to be lucky and hit it big or he's doing something illegal but most boys struggling in their 20s are going to be broke and so the idea that you're actually labeling a 20 year old broke is the equivalent of saying to a baby Oh, you don't have any strength. Ah, look at you. You don't have any strength. You're a weak person. It's a baby. Men build themselves during their 20s. And that's why, gentlemen, I will tell you, if you're in your 20s and you go out and you find some woman that is sucking every single dime that you make, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it bloody wrong. In your 20s, that's the time that you should be putting every dime away for investment purposes. You should be working two to three jobs. You should be hustling hard. And every single dime goes into investing. Not buying shiny objects to f attract women. Because regardless, they're going to see you as broke. If a woman cannot accept you during your building period, my friend, that's not the woman you want to go into and invest in for the long term. Don't waste your time. Pump and dump. Get in, get out. But do not waste money on her.
She got to be willing to build with you during your 20s. That's the woman you hold on to. Seeing so many more women cheat. And being a woman myself, I get to be an insider to the things that women talk about. And yes, they will admit to one another that they cheat, but you will never hear an ounce of remorse. They always victimize themselves. What they'll say is, instead of saying, you know what, I cheated, it was wrong. Um, it was dishonest of me. It was betrayal and I'll never do it again. What you will hear is, well, I cheated because I had to. He wasn't giving me what I needed and what I deserved as a woman. And all the other women will, you know, jump right in and, you know, be victims and victimize her saying, oh, you poor thing. Um, he should have treated you better. You take care of his kids and you do this, you do that. And he should have appreciated you more and you wouldn't have had to go screw another man. But it's, it's really... Uh, quite scary how they do that, but they they're never remorseful and they always shift the blame. but I've seen so many Yeah, I mean that one is standard on Practically every woman a woman will defend her morality to the end of the day because she knows that that is what she's most admired for now it's getting worse because more women now are proud of being hoes in this day and age. It's almost as if the tides are turning where women are literally just saying, ah, yeah, this is me, I'm a hoe, and I don't give a shit. I don't care. That's where we are. But in essence, the women who want to be perceived as good and not bitches and, and, and promiscuous women, they will lie to the nth degree. I can't call them good women because the act of actually cheating on your husband makes you a bad woman. But yeah, you know, men don't ask much from women. Practically the only thing that men ask from women is keep your legs closed. Women have a long laundry list. Most men just ask for keep your, keep your bloody legs closed, stay beautiful, stay kind, be gentle and support me. That's it. Done. Anyway, it's just another one of those videos, my friend. This one is interesting. So sometimes another thing people do where we talk about being responsible. So sometimes a woman is married mm -hmm. um, and they've been separated for a while. She gets pregnant by another man. Her husband is the father. Well, so I the mean, husband, the husband is, is the legal father, not the the baby daddy is the husband on the hook for that child. For that child. But, so you can't even get divorced in Georgia if you're pregnant. Really? Because the Georgia favors legitimate children being married in wedlock, regardless of who put the baby in there. Okay, so you can't get divorced while you're pregnant. Which I got. I'm waiting for a couple babies to be delivered right now. <laughs> that ain't the husbands. We wow. have to deal with it. Right. You know. Um. So. Yeah. You. You can. Husbands, you're definitely responsible for them babies. So how do you go about? I guess getting off the hook when that happens. When, when you're the husband? Yes, ma'am. So it kind of depends um, on where we are and kind of like what the deal is, right? Okay. So, because if, if we if we stick into the law, like procedural to procedural, like we got to have that other baby daddy tag into the case, and basically almost like transfer legitimacy. That never happens though, um, because sometimes the baby daddy ain't trying to step up. And like, mm -hmm. That's what I was gonna ask. So I guess yeah. if they deny it, it becomes just a big old problem. Yeah, yeah, it becomes a problem because the court is not gonna delegitimate a child. Wow, you don't want to have a baby in Georgia. I can tell you that. Some laws in different states are messy, man. So that's an attorney. She's telling you the lay of the land, gentlemen. So take heed. <laughs> that this requires no more explanation than what you have seen right there. It's very clear. Just listen and learn, gentlemen. So when you go through a separation as a married couple and your wife get pregnant in that instance, that's your child. Unless the other man, the biological father, steps up and say, hey, I want possession of my child. Yeah, that one is scary. Part of what makes a man a man is he must be able to protect. The other part of what makes a man a man is that he must be able to control his emotions because Wild emotion plus incredible strength of a man creates a problem for society. He has to be taken down. But sometimes when the emotions and the strength collides and you can't do anything except defend yourself or scrap it out, so to speak, you got to also be careful you don't kill your opponent. And the thing is, we men know this. Sometimes women don't understand this, that 
when two men come together and we can't resolve it with words, it's going to go to blows. One man is going to throw a lick first. He's going to, and the other guy has to defend and either try to put the other guy down. You see, women don't experience that because women can verbally abuse a man and the man can't respond physically. So they think that they're all badass because the man don't respond physically. Or if he does respond, he has to respond with the equal amount of force for the woman as not to blame or to knock her out or to, to use excessive force because that will come back to haunt him. All right. So what I'm trying to show you here is that when two men are scrapping, when they're fighting and they're putting force into it, somebody can end up getting killed. And you do not want to kill another man, whether it's intentional or unintentional, over some dumb shit like, oh, you scuffed my shoes or you didn't say this right to me or you disrespected me. Well, we men and the older guys, we understood that. We understood, hey, there is limits to the fighting. But let's watch this video and then you'll understand what I'm trying to say. All right. See, they scrapped it. So, of course, he wanted to knock him out. But... He ain't want bro life to be in danger. Pulled him to safety quick. That's the difference between old generations and this current one we in. Old school just want to teach you a lesson. New school wants you to pay the supreme price for everything. I mean, for absolutely nothing. See what I'm talking about? Old school, we know, hey, man, listen, you step out of line. I'm going to throw two boxes in you and you, 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 you step back. You relax yourself. I'm not here to kill you. I'm not here to do 20, 30 years for you. Most of the time, what you should do is just back the hell down and walk away. But if you can't, you got to do what you got to do. You got to be able to defend yourself. So I hope that made it very clear right there. Let's move on to the next one. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Hell. Escúchame bien. When I tell you that this generation is not only cooked, barbecued, sauteed, charboiled, these motherfuckers are grilled. Dude, you know what's going to really bother me? You women are going to destroy the whole gym culture because that's all y'all been doing. Attention seeking peeps because you know it. There is no need to be spreading it, busting it wide open to get your video taken, bro. Take that shit to OF. Take that shit to your house. And the reason why I'm even making this video is because I love to go to the gym and I feel myself doing regular content. So you're, you women are going to mess it up to the point where there's going to be Jim saying no more cameras. I, I can't wait for that day too because if it's going to come down to seeing this stuff, y'all be doing the most, dude. Oh, y'all, I, I don't know what it is, but like a lot of women in this generation, you guys lack morals. You guys lack discipline. Yeah, she's right. I'm glad that stuff don't happen here in Dubai. Women come in the gym, they respectfully do their gym workouts and they record their workouts. They do their Instagram stuff, but they keep it clean, 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 clean. We don't have any of this sort of coochie up in the air. And uh, no, no, you get immediately banned for that sort of stuff here. But she's right. It's getting horrible, man. It's just getting worse. Women are just pushing even more and more, trying to expose as much of their innards as possible. It's just getting ridiculous. Let me know, guys. If you think I'm wrong, let me know. Hey, listen, if you guys have reached this far in the video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to book a session where you can have a chat with me, get me over on askanolderman.com. Now, listen, there's something else cool coming up soon. I'm bringing a membership site where you can find full-on courses to help you in life. So look for that coming up. If you want to get in early, send me an email on Paul at askanolderman.com. I'm, I'm going to write it below here so you guys can see it. All right, let's go to the next video. Yeah, you're very gorgeous though, but I don't... For a lot. Yeah, you're very gorgeous though, but I don't like that you put the fake flower in your vest trying to make it look better than what it was. Yeah. I don't like that you brought a fake briefcase. There's probably nothing in there, and it's also halfway open. You should probably close it. Well, also, well, I don't like that the fact that you put your briefcase. hat. I mean, the hair done. Something. It's done. It's so done. So why didn't you show your hair? That's what I wanted to do today. I don't understand. I just want to see your hair though. I get it. You feel me? I've, I've dealt with, you feel me, Chicago women most of my life. You okay. You feel me? Me and your brother probably sound alike because we done been through the same struggles. You feel me? But I could respect that. I just wanted to know what you was thinking about. That's all that was. It's just weird talking nope. to my little brother. So. No problem. You can't say little. 
I'm, you, we the same age, darling. Let's be respectful. You sound like him, though. That's so because we're from the same place. So you don't like no, you don't like not. people from your hometown. I never said and that. And that's respectful. I okay. just want a man with a higher vocabulary, okay. which you don't have. On your day-to-day -day speak. I, I talk like where I was born from. I got I got a real like respect. I, I can't let you like you feel me throw down what I've been through. You feel me? I'm I never a, said what I, you went I, through I'm just was. Saying, though, you, 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 you tried though, darling. No, I you feel it. me? So I want you to know, like, I'm really from struggle. I, I speak a certain type of way, but I've searched for education. I have a bachelor's That's degree. Fine. You feel me? What I what I do right now, I work with people every day. So I don't want you to just throw shade on hood in general. Wasn't throwing shade I on you? I speak with a little slang. I got a little hood to me, but I'm educated, baby. No, that's fine. We can move forward. Thank you. Once again, women just feel comfortable just insulting a man. He was a perfect gentleman he just tried to bring her back into place but she just kept pushing the insults one after the next one after the next if you guys don't know the show it's called pop the balloon another episode of pop the balloon or find love and this time around we've got the ladies lined up make some noise ladies <laughs> All right, y'all sound ready. That's good. That's good. So we're about to bring out some single men. They're gonna come out one by one. When they come out, if he's your type, you're feeling him, you like what he's saying, all that good stuff. Do not pop your balloon. But if there's anything that he said that you're like, ooh, red flag. Mm -mm, this guy's not for me. Go ahead and pop it. Then I'll go over to um, a few of you and see what's going on and why you ended up popping. Y'all ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring out our first single guy. Hello, welcome in. I'll have you hold that. What's your name? Um, she had to say all of that. Don't like the freak flower. I don't like the bar. It's like, and then call him and compared him like her little brother. Like, <laughs> wow. I, you guys let me know what you think. But I just feel that women are just so comfortable with insulting men to the point now where it's just getting ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You know, I like to throw in a little humor. Here it is. Guys, look at all this money my girlfriend made just from selling fans. Only. That's it. O only, only fans. That's all she's. No, only fans. That's it. All she sold was fans, and she made this much money. You're. Uh, who's gonna tell him? Uh, <laughs> I love it. Love it. That's funny. You gotta admit, that's funny as hell. Can anyone explain to me how I have two degrees? I have two degrees. Oh, and a certificate. A little extra, right? I have a certificate. May not, may not be a master's, but it's something extra, along with the two degrees, you know? <laughs> I'm trying to apply for jobs right now, and um, the thing is, is that the only person I have responding to me is a man from a tech, um, from a tech company saying, hey, you want to answer some customer service problems? You want to answer some customer service calls? No, Bart, I don't want to answer your calls. No so, no offense, but I'm a little more qualified than to just to be sitting around answering your customer service calls, Bart, okay? I'm sorry, but that's the, but Bart is the only one who's responding to me. So what am I supposed to do? And you know, I'm looking down at these and I'm looking at them and I'm, I'm kind of wondering, I'm like, hmm, what was this for again? Oh, I don't know. None of us men are surprised that all of her degrees are bloody useless in today's environment. And by the way, BART is actually an AI software it's used a lot for tech support and answering questions. Um, it's used by Facebook, I think. BART, uh, let me check this out. It stands for, it stands for Bidirectional and Audio Regressive Transformers, B-A-R-T. <laughs> In other words, all she's doing is she's getting responses from a bloody AI about any prospects of a job. So once again, ladies, a lot of these degrees that you've gone to school for is literally useless, useless. And with AI coming on board at a mind blowing pace, all of those degrees that you have paid a tremendous amount of money for are going to become obsolete, literally instantly. It's happening now at an incredible pace. So, hate to tell this young lady, it's not going to get any better. So, I would strongly suggest, hey, checking out a few restaurants where you can, you know, sling some tables. Or don't go to, o, don't go to OF route because that's going to eliminate your prospects for any man. But 
we now know that OnlyFans is so saturated at the mo at the moment that women are making less money at OnlyFans than they are hitting the fries over in McDonald's. Yes, so that's out now. Okay, let's do one more. And I would really like to be made smaller. What does that mean, made? What what's like made in small? height? You want your height made smaller? Yeah. You want to be shorter? Yeah. How, I've never heard that. I did something similar. I had a spinal shortening. I started at five, six and a half and ended at five, five and a half. All they had to do was brutally remove my T12 vertebrae and build a cage to hold my spine together. So uh, 10 out of 10 would recommend for scientific purposes, not for aesthetic purposes. Sometimes I, I really think there's something severely wrong. I, uh, I want to be made shorter. I'm willing to pay 100000 so that I could be one inch shorter. Why? Oh, my, uh. Something's wrong. Something is wrong with this society. Bigger tits, smaller waist, bigger ass, bigger lips. And it's not men demanding this, ladies. It's not men. This is a signet that's that infecting you all. It's not men carrying the disease. It's women pushing the shit. Wow. I, I don't know. I just can't even look at her, man. Okay, what nobody say. Lashes make a big difference. Because on this side, it's like, oh, hey, how you doing? And on that side, it's like, hey, how you doing? Okay, who's going to tell her that the side without the lash looks a thousand times better? You got to be careful with the lashes because they can be so heavy and so dark that it actually creates more of a darkness around your eye, giving you the appearance of eye bags and dark circles. And it also can obscure your eyes so that they appear more closed. Less is usually more. And as a photographer, I'm telling you, Women, they, the women come in with these heavy freaking lashes. And then when I'm editing them in Photoshop, the, the eyelids are literally just closing their eyes down so much. They're losing a lot of the beauty of their eyes. And you know, guys. So it just blows my mind that women just don't understand this shit. For a special occasion, you just put in a few little bits of extra hair. That's it. As usual, black women have to go way overboard with these freaking lashes, also known as cum catchers. Cause that's where it all started. A new study finds that despite women making less money than men, more single women in the U.S. own homes than single men, thanks to a phenomenon economists call divorce. <laughs> Oh, I just had to end with that one because, yes, it's true. More women get homes during a divorce than anything else. So what can we say, guys? We know the game. We know the game very well. And with that, I will leave you with this one simple bit of information. If you own a home before you get married, make sure that that home is owned by a trust. You do not own it personally. I gave the same advice to one of my brothers today who just got engaged. Thankfully, the home that he has already bought is in the name of his mom. So he was prepared for this. However, I said you should take it one step further, take your mom out of the equation, put it into a trust. It's much easier to then transfer that asset to your kids when they get older. But don't ever get engaged while you're doing this process. Don't get married and then try to do it. You're already screwing yourself. There is more legal grounds for a judge to say, ah, you are doing this because you're trying to hide assets. Look, you are already engaged. That's why you did it. No, you do it before you even get engaged so that everything is above board. All right, guys, remember that, please. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for tuning in again on this edition of The Older Man Random Reviews. Okay, book a session if you need to have a chat with me. Or if you have a quick question, get me over on Instagram, send me a voice note, and I will respond in kind as soon as I can. All right, so until next time, remember, whenever in doubt, always, always ask an older man. I'll see you soon. Cheers.